Welcome to Conquering Fibromyalgia, a functional medicine approach. And this is Dr. Todd Stone. Starting with the question, why do I have fibromyalgia? And of course, this is a very complex uh, uh, question to answer. There's so many things going on. Obviously, it has not been uh, described very adequately, um, leading to any good protocols um, that are really in the mainstream at this point. But I'll try to summarize this or simplify this as, as much as possible. So if we to say one thing is going on, and that one thing would be that your brain is receiving danger signals from different types of chemical messengers. Uh, chemical messengers are hormones um, uh, that are produced in the immune system, that are produced from glands, that are produced in individual cells. That signal uh, back to the brain what the environment is like in your body. So just a simple example is if you're anemic, if you're not carrying oxygen to your cells, those cells are going to signal back to your brain that something uh, drastically wrong is going on and that's going to initiate a stress physiology. It's going to change your body chemistry. So different immune shifts, different hormone shifts will send those messages back to the brain and will result in a stress physiology. And that stress physiology will sensitize your nerves, it'll sensitize your brain, it'll cause these changes. Number one is decreased brain activation. There was a study in 2008, the first study that ever showed that all fibromyalgia sufferers have something in common, and that was decreased brain activation, which literally means that the brain is firing at a lower rate. And also the reason why I suggest that you have a fibromyalgia advocate, somebody you trust, somebody you, um, you can lean on to help guide you through this maze of medicine and, and promises and things like that and really find the science and really find what makes sense. So you have an altered brain physiology and that results in a loss of pain gating. Our pain receptors constantly fire. It's an absolute necessity um, of a nerve to fire or die. So while you're not using them, they are gated <clears throat> or not needing them. So these pain receptors fire, um, but they never re uh, re reach the top of the brain and uh, they never become perceptive to you. You don't feel them. So you lose that gating mechanism in the spinal cord as a result of this altered brain physiology and uh, the danger signals uh, re resulting in the stress physiology. You then suffer from a decreased threshold. And I just use the common example of people saying, I've had it up to here, that's their threshold. And uh, it's a stress th threshold ultimately. So as your, uh, as your uh, nervous system changes, you may start with a threshold, a, a resting threshold at maybe about waistline, if you can p picture somebody saying up to here they're starting and put their hand by the waistline, they have a pretty good capacity for handling stress. Now if you take that hand and you move it up to the neck, and now this is their resting threshold, they don't have a lot of capacity for handling stress, and that's what, fibromyalgia, what happens in fibromyalgia. So just a little bit of stress puts that nervous system over and it shuts down. They also have a de decreased metabolic capacity, which is more, it's very similar to the threshold capacity uh, concept, uh, but more on a hormonal uh, physiology level. And that's the reason why people with fibromyalgia work a day and then have to lay down for two days. And each time they work a day and they stress their metabolic capacity or push beyond their metabolic capacity and they collapse like that, they're actually decreasing their capacity for the next time they try. And it happens slowly and happens subtly, but um, over time, I mean, you can look back and say, well, geez, now I can barely do anything. Whereas um, I, I, I used to be able to run and, you know, uh, hike the mountain and you name it. So in a nutshell, that is fibromyalgia. That is um, fairly well proven scientifically in studies that that is the nature of fibromyalgia. Now, if you're waiting for mainstream to um, catch up and, and accept this in its entirety because it's a complex phenomenon, um, you know, plan on suffering for the next 30 years or so. So can anything be done? Um, and there is, yes, there's hope, there's science. 
like I mentioned, and there is a solution. This is a testimonial written by uh, Melissa, as you can see, and I'll just read through this. I'm pain-free 95% of the time, which is miraculous. I have enough energy to take my dog, uh, Annabelle, on good long walks. Sometimes I even run with her. I have enough energy to enjoy the local music scene uh, with friends. I can think clearly. I can be involved with my family and do my responsibilities. I can have fun. I seldom see depression's dark cloud and live quite a fulfilling life. I look forward to solving the remaining riddles with my health issues and am most grateful to the kind Dr. Stone for taking me on this journey. And that's the truth. Thanks, Doc. And uh, what, what I noticed from that right away um, is that doesn't sound like a fibromyalgia sufferer. That sounds like somebody who's well on her way to being a healthy person again. And of course, she's building up that capacity. She's building up her threshold um, so that she can take more and more over time. And I'm coaching her right along the way on what she needs to do to do that. So what makes us different? And why can we get that, uh, uh, that type of result when everywhere you look, um, there's no answer for fibromyalgia. First of all, there's a lot of question asking. We evaluate um, neurologically and metabolically, and of course we treat that way too. So neurologically, the nervous system, metabolically, your body chemistry, and particularly your immune system and your hormones. We honor the hierarchy of function, um, and we honor your metabolic capacity. So if I took Melissa and I said, okay, let's uh, start a uh, 6K run every day as part of our solution. That's, that's not going to work for her. We had to do some very gentle things that actually expanded her metabolic capacity over time. Um, we ask why, and we expect to find a solution. Um, if we do enough of the testing, and now I know what, uh, what tests are commonly coming back uh, positive or imbalanced, um, we, we do those tests. We get, we will find something there. I actually had a patient, um, who said, what if I spend this money and I, and I don't come up with anything? What if I'm empty again? I said, you know what, if I don't come up with anything, I'll pay for your tests. And, uh, of course we found, uh, four or five, six different things that were like really key issues to moving her in the right direction. And we asked deeper questions. So things like uh, the immune uh, function, we do the T and B cell lymphocyte panel, we do barrier function. Barriers are like your, your skin is a barrier. You also have an intestinal barrier. You have a, a blood brain barrier. So we need to know if those are working properly. Um, we do a, a functional brain analysis so we can see which areas are working um, decently and which ones are really kind of weakened. We look at the balance of all your hormones. Um, inflammation, nutrient deficiency, organ function, physical function. We look at, you know, even your muscle strength capacities and, and we take you where you are and we work towards greater function. 